This is the Onyx Books Tab X, the world's first e-ink tablet PC. A resolution of 2200 by 1650 at 207 ppi and all the other fixins. 6 gigs of RAM, 128 gigs onboard storage, all powered by a 6300 milliamp battery. But honestly, that's not what we're focusing on today. Specs are great, but workplace solutions and screen real estate is what this unit is all about. It's a 13.3 inch screen using a Carta 1250 display. What this brings is a 30% increase in overall performance and less latency with the pen, meaning it's faster. However, this comes at a cost. At $879, it's no easy pill to swallow. So let's check out the Tab X, starting with the pen. The included pen is a Pen 2 Pro by Onyx. It has this little thimble cover, don't worry about that. The pen is very nice. It is an overall very nice build. It has the standard tips, not the Shinonome G2. And if you don't know what we mean, basically this is the tip that will fit everything iReader, Remarkable, Amazon Scribe, everything. It's the exact same tip. At the back, you have an eraser that pushes down. The entire thing is a single color. The thing about Onyx pens is that they do mix and match their colors a lot. Sometimes it's black, sometimes it's blue, sometimes it's blackish green. So you can't really guarantee what kind of pen color you'll get, but you'll all get the Pen 2 Pro. For the majority of this video, we are going to have these settings. Dark color enhancement, Default 30, Light Color 10, and HD Mode, which basically means it's the best looking mode. This is what the home screen is looking like. You do have some things on the left here that has your quick launcher, library store, etc. And this is your main screen, so you have Google Play, all of your apps, your apps will increase the more you download. And if you drop the top down, this is going to be your control center. This is where you're going to be all your rotate, screencast, mute, books drop, etc. The most important thing out of all this, aside from the glow light, which we will show you later, is this, the e-ink center. The e-ink center is going to have all your speed modes, your dark color enhancement, and your app optimization. We will show you the speed modes in a little bit. HD balanced, fast, and ultra fast. Ultra fast is crazy fast. It's, it's just the fastest you will ever find a large screen e-reader in there really is no comparison you have your notes there you have your file explorer if you click right here you can browse all your files and if you want to you have the bottom bar which is back home more e-ink center and refresh you can actually change this to gesture support in the settings so you can use gesture up side left right etc google play right out of the box has and requires no backdoor entries no GSFIDs, which is Google Service Framework Identifications. You just use it. You can see my face in the top corner there. It just starts. It is absolutely insane how easy you do to just click it, put your email, put your password, and you're in. There's nothing else you need to do. There's nothing you need to maintain or update. Everything from here is completely usable from the perspective of a tablet using Google Play. If we go to ultra fast, you will see that this is now ridiculously quick with almost no refresh and minimal staining, I might add. There's some staining in the back there, but for the most part, it's unobtrusive and you get all the compatibility and usability of what you would expect from Google Play. The note-taking experience is pretty robust, so we'll try to do our best to get through it as quick as possible while not leaving anything out. You do get five different pens. Now that's not a lot of individual pens, but you can actually customize them up top. So you can actually choose what pen and what color, what thickness, and use them as your presets. No other device allows you to customize pens outside of the Quaderno, which gives you two pen choices. Most importantly out of all of this, if you select the pencil, look what they've done. You have the regular pencil, press hard pencil, or tilt. Yes, they've actually added tilt, and this marks as the third manufacturer to do Tilt. This is amazing and it works with any pen on the market. This is 
absolutely necessary, I believe, especially when you are using the pencil feature. If you go over to the next section, we do have a bunch of colors. If it ever gets too stainy, click the refresh and away it goes. We have four colors, but we actually have a little bit more than that. We have some different shades and we have white, red, green, and blue. So basically what these are are color codes. So they refer to the color code. If you use green and you go like that, that's going to be green only when you export it. It will not be green on the page because it's a black and white display. The only colors that hit your eyes are black, dark gray, gray, and light gray. Going over to the next section, you have your lasso tool. So once you've drawn this beautiful Michelangelo's house, you can move it around. You can do a bunch of things to it. Cut, copy, colors, redo, undo, tag. You can copy it, you can stamp it, you can stretch it, you can rotate it, you can do anything you want. Click out to continue that and then move on to the next page. We will also mention there are 500 pages you can add in one notebook. So as you add all these pages, as it says four out of five, you can go up to 500 in one single file. That's a lot. Now we will convert text as it says. Click the AI button. It does it so fast. That's the fastest conversion I've ever seen. You can choose a bunch of things. Original, reflow, copy and insert text. Original will be exactly the way you've written it in as best of a lined up as you can. See the way I wrote now was presumably on a different level than the way I wrote will. So that's kind of the way it goes, but you can do a lot with the AI conversion and it actually converts all the pages if it finds something written. Obviously it just has a warning sign and a disgruntled face because it's not a real writing, but if you go back it will actually go through the entire thing and convert and you can also press share and it will reconvert it again just to make sure nothing's changed and it will share from there. You can do B a PNG, you can do PDF and then you can share via the QR code for someone else to scan or you can share it via applications. So if you have Outlook or Gmail or something like that, you can totally do that. Finally, on the last page here, you can go to insert. Insert, you can do recordings, attachments, link to a page, link to websites, you can put hyperlinks, or you can go to pictures, in which case we go down to pictures, put in our little Android guy, press the OK button. He's landed on the page. I can choose where to put him, stamp out of it, and then I can go back, go to my pen, choose a color. Oh, out of breath on that one, you can do so much and you can start editing your Android guy, like so. Go down to here, and then click share, and you have now taken the picture somebody sent you that you dropped in your picture folder, put on the canvas, put your flare on it, signed a form, dated it, and then sent it back. It's so quick, it's so easy, and we're not done there. And this is something we're not gonna go through every one of because my goodness, there's a lot. No one else does shapes like Onyx. iReader does shaping pretty well, but look at these shapes. You get arrows, squiggles, circles, everything in between. Not only that, you can choose a regular circle with dots in light gray, full size, and boom. That would take you forever to draw on your own. If I wanted to do drafting, this will be the last one, in red in mid-size with this Morse code kind of thing. Oh, you better believe you can do it. Onyx has you covered. When you export, that's gonna be red, that's gonna be dark gray, and that's it. This is what we're talking about, everybody. PDFs on 13.3. This is truly, really the only time PDFs should be actually used for your bread and butter and that is if this is for your education or your doctor you're walking around with the patient's charts you don't want to have to pinch and zoom and scale everything i can read the barcodes i can read the isbns everything so this is a true way to fit a four size paper on here you can turn pages you can 
take notes right away. You do have some text augments augmentation as well. You have contents, progress, format, contrast, navigation, and split view. We'll show you split view in a second. You have a lot of different things here. You can crop, you can do the margins, you can enhance the text, you can enhance the actual contrast of the picture elements or the text elements, and you can actually get rid of some of the watermarking, which may come in handy for certain PDFs. You can reflow, you can do zooms, or you can do pinch and zooms. Now, the most important thing out of all of this for me personally towards this unit is split view. Split view gives you choice. Current doc, another doc, doc and notepad, and doc and translate. We are going to look at all of these because that is the entire point of reading these things here. Now, what this is, is the document opened twice. So it'll be the same thing. It won't be a bind in the middle. They're actually completely autonomous from each other. But what this means is I can reference certain things, a working file and my clean file or vice versa. So I can make my notes here and say, you know what, I'm going to make sure that's what it looks like on there. And then it transfers over to there and you can change those settings so it doesn't always mimic what you're doing. Side by side with another doc means you can actually use a document on this side and a different document on the other side. So I can take my notes here, I can take my notes here, and I can actually interact via the elements on this notepad as well. So you see they have these little tabs on the side, I can choose my month, I can choose my day, go into it, take my notes here, and then go back to this one and say, you know what, maybe I'm busy that day, I want to change that one. This one's really good for running two completely separate documents completely separate from each other and they both work on their own. I'm gonna say I like Doc plus Notepad the best because what this is now is you've split the entire UI into separate applications because on my books Neo Reader I have a PDF open but over here I have the entire note taking experience that once had the vertical bar split into a two stack horizontal palette. So I still have all my pens, I still have tilt, I have zoom, I have all my shapes, all my colors, my lasso tool, I have literally everything that the note taking section had in this kind of eight to eight and a half inch screen real estate here while retaining the complete function over my PDF on that side. And this is a good one to have in your back pocket. A very interesting but very useful setting is document plus translate. Watch this. As I swipe through the book, in a second it translates everything that it deems a text element on this side and translates it on the other side. As you swipe, it translates it and translates it and translates it. This is awesome. Are you paying $900 to read ebooks? Absolutely not. But can you? Sure. We'll touch on this for about a minute and a half, hopefully. It does read ebooks. You can go over to the Amazon application. You can read ebooks. You can download from the Amazon store. And they've actually refined the Kindle application for this unit. So it is very high quality and it's optimized to work very well. When you're done with your book, you can go over to the Amazon bookstore and just download from millions of titles across various mediums like audiobooks, editorials, newspapers, magazines, and just so much more. It's really not limiting you to just buying from the Onyx bookstore or finding your books on the internet and sideloading them in, which you can do, but they give you things like the ability to download Kindle, Barnes & Noble, Kobo, and have access to so many bookstores across whatever app you choose to put on here. If you're thinking the white light is very blue, it is, and that's because this has a lot of LEDs and the degree of Kelvin is a little bit on the high side, which means it's a very kind of 
blue purpley experience but they got you covered with the warm light so you can basically turn that up and you can get a nice amount right about there that looks good and you can turn down the cold and up the orange and down the orange and up the cold you can make it look quite candle light if you wish or you can find a nice stone white which I personally like right around there that looks fantastic for reading it's easier on the eyes it's not too blue in your face and it gives you an overall very true black on white experience the glow lights on 13.3s were hit and miss a little bit earlier on because it's just so much screen real estate they need to illuminate but now with the technology illuminating a gel layer shooting light into the layer rather than on top of the screen itself we have this overall blanket level of stability in the industry where it just looks so good. Before we get over to using a Bluetooth keyboard on this unit, I want to draw attention to the fact that this is almost the exact same size as a Bluetooth keyboard. I mean, that's pretty good. You do have a width screen real estate once it's landscape rotated that mimics an actual keyboard. This is about as big as you can get. In fact, it is as big as you can get on e-ink devices currently because no devices are really bigger than this that have any sort of touch outside of the gigantic 50-inch Rico, and that's only with a pen, not your actual fingertips. So this is really nice. Ready to go Google Play functionality out the wazoo, and the best 13.3 inch in the industry. All of this means that this unit cannot be overlooked. It demands our attention. It demands us to talk about it. With tons of devices bound to come out this year, we're starting off strong. And so is Onyx, with this miraculous piece of e-ink technology. More to come from goodyreader.com, so stay tuned.